What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the all new MSI QB Nug. Now, I do wanna mention that this is more of a business PC. The one that we're taking a look at has their three year advanced replacement, but we're still gonna be testing a few games on this thing. And another big reason I wanted to get my hands on this, it's actually using a chip that I haven't personally tested on the channel in a mini PC yet. And I was kinda of interested to see what kind of performance we could get out of this thing. I did mention the three year advanced replacement and this is pretty cool because what they mean by advanced replacement is you don't have to send this thing in. They don't have to inspect it or anything like that. You contact them, you tell them something's wrong with the PC, they're gonna send you a new one. You can go ahead, set that new one up and then worry about sending the old one in. They're trying to alleviate any kind of downtime that would be caused by any issues with these mini PCs. And I thought that was really cool. Three years on this, but they do offer another one with a one year warranty. So keep that in mind. Inside of the box, right along with the MSI QB, we do get some accessories here. And one thing that I noticed was there's an external power button, which I thought was pretty cool. You can actually route it from the motherboard and then place it basically anywhere you need to. Also comes with a mounting bracket, all the hardware you need. It'll support a 2.5 inch drive internally. So we've got the cabling for that and a 120 watt power supply. When it comes to IO, up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, dual USB 3, and these are both 10 gig ports, plus we've got a micro SD card slot, two full-size HDMI ports, dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet, and two USB 4 ports. In total, we can do four displays with this unit, utilizing both of these HDMIs and both of the USB 4s. While we're here, I figured I'd give you a look at the internals. And the main reason you'd want to get in here was to add a 2.5 inch drive. It'll actually mount right in the bottom plate. It's easy to get in here, four screws. And once we get in here, you see we've got a 2280 M.2 SSD with a heatsink pre-installed. Underneath that is our Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth chip. It's using an Intel AX211 chip. This mini PC supports SODEM DDR5 running in dual channel. And we can actually add that external power button from the motherboard here. There's a spot on the side, a little plug we can pull out, run that cable right through it. And there's actually a spot for another M.2 drive. It's actually a 2242 drive. So you can add two M.2 SSDs here and a 2.5 inch drive. So you could add a lot of storage to this mini. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs, this is utilizing the Intel Core 7. Now it's not an ultra chip. Basically what they've done here is just remove the NPU. It's the Intel Core 7 150U, and with this, we get 10 cores, 12 threads, two performance cores, eight efficiency cores, 12 megabytes of cache, and this will clock up to 5.4 gigahertz. Graphics are handled by a built-in Intel iGPU with 96 execution units, and this will clock up to 1.3 gigahertz. It supports SODEM DDR5 up to 64 gigabytes, running at 5200 megahertz. We can add two M.2 SSDs, a 2280 comes pre-installed. You can also add an extra 2242. It's got that Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX212 chip with Bluetooth 5.3. Windows 11 Pro comes pre-installed and you get that three year advanced replacement from MSI. So getting right into it here, like I mentioned, this is running Windows 11 Pro. And as you can see, we've got that Intel Core 7 150U. It's been a pretty decent performer. I've been up and running for close to four hours now, testing a lot of different things here. 10 cores, 12 threads, dual channel DDR5 at 5200. And of course that Intel iGPU and there's nine gigabytes dedicated from the BIOS. One thing that I noticed here was as soon as I booted it up, we did get a chance to install the MSI center here. Hardware monitoring, we can free up some memory right here, but I thought this was pretty cool. Go over to our features, power meter. This will actually allow you to kind of record power consumption from this PC. And if you were to, let's say, have five of these running in your business, it could definitely add up. So this would kind of give you an idea of how much power each one of these systems is burning. This also has the MSI power link. So you can run this from a monitor that supports USB type C, wireless display, clipboard sync, and from features, our MSI AI engine. I've got this off, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And basically it's gonna optimize performance for whatever task you're doing at any given time. So I'm gonna leave that on through all of my testing and I've already run some benchmarks on this machine, but I did wanna go through a little bit of web browsing and some video playback here. So we head over to MSI's website really quick. I'm actually connected over Wi-Fi right now, but remember we've got dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Everything loads up without a hitch here from products. Just set up Windows 11 over here. It's gonna bring us over to a new website. 
yeah, I mean, really snappy little setup here. Next thing I wanted to take a look at was just some video playback from YouTube. And we'll go with this one right here. So 4K 60 HDR. Make sure we're at a true 4K here. We'll full screen it and, oh, I've already got stats for nerds on. We'll just let it play through. And I've always had really good luck with these core chips uh, running 4K. Even lower end chips do a really great job with 4K playback from the web or natively. Up in the top left hand corner, we do have stats for nerds going. And on the initial load in, we had three drop frames, but throughout it's not going to drop anymore. And I've seen this quite a few times. If I went back, let it buffer a second, change that resolution. Going into it, we wouldn't get any kind of drop frames. But yeah, for 4K video playback, whether you want to stream it, play it natively from the internal storage, or run it from an external storage drive, this is going to handle it just fine. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks, and I put this up against the Core Ultra 7 165H. Now that Core Ultra 7 has uh, 16 cores and 22 threads, so in multi-core with Geekbench 6 here, it did beat it out. But as you can see, single core performance with this 150U is coming in higher. And we're going to kind of see this across the board. So with Cinebench R23, single core, 1,880 on this 150U, and multi coming in at 9,565. Again, that 165H has 16 cores and 22 threads as opposed to the 10 cores and 12 threads of the 150U. I also just went ahead and ran PC Mark 10. We got a total score of 4,426 here. And finally, I did run a GPU benchmark. We've got 3D Mark Night Raid coming with the 16,698. And keep in mind, this iGPU only clocks up to 1.3 gigahertz. It's got 96 execution units, so it's very similar to something like the Iris GPU, just with a bit of a lower clock. Those usually went up to 1.5, I think 1.65 on the higher end chips. Now this thing is not advertised as a gaming PC whatsoever, but it doesn't mean we can't get some gaming out of the way on this. It's not going to run something like Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080 over 60. I'd say 900p, you could probably break 30 with it. But for easier to run games, this little iGPU can definitely handle them. A lot of the indie stuff, here we have Hades 2, 60 FPS, and I am at 1080 high with this one. I also went through and tested some of my favorite older games, like Dirt 3. I still go back to this, and yeah, I said it was an older one, uh, but we're over 100 FPS, ultra settings, 1080p, and this is still a lot of fun. I just love coming back to this one. I also wanted to see how it would handle Half-Life 2, and right now we're at 1080 Ultra. We're seeing an average of over 200 FPS, and I know right now it's much higher. That's because we're indoors. There's not a lot of draw distance going on, but as soon as we get out of here, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Either way, it's still holding its own for these older games and indie games. Another thing I always like to test with these mini PCs is total system power consumption from the wall. And this could be really important for people lining up a bunch of these in their business. So what I use is a kilowatt meter plugged into the wall and I am using the MSI AI engine. So that is on from software. At idle, this thing's only pulling six watts on average. Average gaming with what we tested so far, up to 24 watts. And the maximum that I could get this thing to pull while maxing out the GPU and CPU was 42 watts. So in the grand scheme of things, it's definitely a lower wattage unit. And if you're just gonna be running web browsers on this or even video playback, these are gonna average 12 to 14 watts in total power draw from the wall. So let's say you had 10 of these things under normal use, all of them put together are only gonna be drawn 140 watts. So yeah, I mean, with everything that's going on here, this thing's been performing really well as an everyday desktop PC. You want to do some spreadsheets on this, it's not going to be an issue. With a PC like this, given that they've got that three-year warranty, you could set this up for signage, POS machine, and if you're a regular individual just looking to pick up a PC like this because of that warranty, and you know this thing's going to be staying on 24 hours a day, I think this would be a good choice as long as you know exactly what you're getting into. It's not a AAA gaming machine, but it's going to handle all tasks that most people throw at these. You could do some photo editing on this, you could do some 1080p video editing, of course, web browsing, email checking, document editing, all of that is good to go on this Intel Core 7 150U. 
It really is a mini workhorse, and if you're interested in learning a little more about the MSI QB, I'll leave some links in the description. And keep in mind, they do sell one at a bit of a lower cost with a one-year warranty, but that three-year warranty is their no-weight warranty. So if you've got any kind of issue with this, you contact them. They're going to go ahead and send one out immediately to you. That way you can get the new one installed, set up, ready to go, and then you don't really have to worry about sending one in, waiting a few months for them to fix it or just replace it. They'll go ahead and ship a new one right out to you. You can send the old one back once you got everything installed. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.